What is up, guys? Jared333, like, subscribe, and share. Check out links in the description. So in this video, we're going to go uh, over a few things. Um, I went ahead and I watched Woodward TV's last video yesterday. And I believe it is his latest video, uh, currently 16 hours ago. What you need to know about something strange. In the video, he talks about the abyss being a literal thing and he talks about the beast being literal thing and so I want in this video I'm gonna give my honest opinion and natural thoughts uh, on the videos for entertainment purposes only you do not have to take anything I say to heart with that being said I would like to start off with something that he said in the video which was a horse is a horse of course of course but not when you're dealing with the bible here are at least eight bible verses of dreams which had to be interpreted which means the people who had the dreams or the vision didn't know what the heck was going on so they had to get an interpreter so for them or for the these visions were given in scripture um you, they had to have somebody to tell them what it means. So that saying does not apply. So let's just go over one here in Genesis 41, 15. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream, but no one can interpret it. And I have heard it said about you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And if you know the account, he does interpret it. But I do not want to stay on that subject. I want to talk about, you know, the things that he was talking about in Revelation. So a lot of his video was based on the scriptures in Revelation. Uh, these ones in particular that I'm going to be going over. We're going to go over a lot of them. So this video might be kind of long. Um, you know, so if you have any spare time, uh, you know, you can pause the video and come back to it later. And so here we go. So he was talking about the abyss and the beasts and creatures that were being described here in Revelation as being real. So let's see what the Bible is saying. And we'll go ahead and like I said, these are my personal thoughts and opinions. And you do not have to agree with them. And so this is for entertainment purposes, like I said. Let's start with Revelation 9.13. That's Revelation chapter 9.13. And I really like Bible Hub because it gives you multiple different Bibles um, um, on the same scripture. So let's go ahead and read it. We'll start here. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet and heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. The next verse reads, it said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great rivers Euphrates. So what I would kind of want to know is why are they bound? Like usually from what I read in the book of Enoch, they bound uh, spirits, creatures that have been bad or done something wrong. So it doesn't explain that here in these uh, further scriptures, but let's keep reading. Verse 15 says, And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour, day, and month, and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The next verse reads, The number of the mounted troops was 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. So, if you look at the other translations, it's, it says 200 million. So, probably 200 million troops now like I said we're trying to decipher the symbolism or the realism or the literal things from the type of metaphorical things being said here let's go on to the next verse the horses and riders look like this I saw in my vision remember it's a vision this is a vision a vision is something like a dream you don't necessarily have to be sleeping though to have a vision. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, 
and out of their mouths came fire smoke like sulfur so we don't see anything like that now a day so in this time period where in which we live we don't have dinosaurs but we do have animals but they don't breathe out fire smoke and sulfur that sounds like a dragon okay let's go ahead and uh, read the next verse here a third of mankind was killed by the plagues of fire smoke sulfur that came out of their mouths so one third of mankind that's a lot of people and they were killed by these plagues of fire so what I want to kind of point out here it says plagues so there's a huge difference in a plague and a creature you know throwing out you know fireballs at you but the th there's another thing though that I also want to point out is that in the Bible they would consider a huge amount of locusts or toads as a plague so that doesn't because of that it doesn't rule out completely that that's what that what that is what would happen because of the animals or bugs or things of that nature could be considered a plague so let's continue came out of their mouths okay so let's read uh, verse 19 the power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails for their tails were like snakes having heads which inflict injury so once again i want to point out in this time period we live in we do not know of any type of of creature or creatures that have multiple other creatures assets on them or to them um only like platypus platypus has like a beak of a duck and has like a a beaver thing that lays eggs it's the only, one of the only mammals we know that lays eggs so there's not too many of them besides that one um let's go ahead and read the next verse the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues so they were not killed so they're right, right there by the plagues <clears throat> i want to say something this verse whether the last verse was literal or physical so what whether the last verses was talking about an actual creature that blow that you know blows fire and brimstone was literal or not this scripture is extremely literal now when i say extremely literal there's not really much to interpret here and it's extremely literal the rest of mankind were not, who were not killed and there's gonna there's gonna be some other scriptures that are very literal like this by the plagues still did not repent of the works by their hands <clears throat> they did not stop worshiping demons idols of gold silver bronze stone wood idols that cannot see hear or walk so this scripture sounds extremely literal god does not like the worship of idol worship he doesn't like that he doesn't like you worshiping things that like the cross and things that cannot see or walk you know people be worshiping and praying to inanimate objects which is you know it's stupid so this is extremely literal so the these past two okay we're on 20 remember we're on 20 these past two scriptures are literal because of 20 but we just don't know exactly if it's an actual beast or if it's a plague of some kind of fire some type of fiery plague that that's what we know okay let's go to the next verse 21 they did not repent of their murders magic arc sexual immorality or their theft so this once again is also a very literal scripture um talking about those that make it past the fiery um plagues chapter 10 now then i saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven he was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head 
His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. All right, so once again, I personally have not seen anything like this, although I have seen some very out of this world things um, and experienced some out of this world things, but most people that I know or that you know or that you come across, we don't see this every day, okay? So let's go to the next verse. Verse 2, he was holding a little scroll, which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot in the sea and his left foot on the land. So, because he put his left foot on the, left foot on the land and right foot on the sea, that kind of tells me he must be kind of big, like, you know, kind of tall, like a big, tall angel, okay? So, let's go to the next verse, because... Remember, this is his uh, vision that he's seeing in his head. So when you're seeing a vision, you know, a lot of times the vision might tell you some things, maybe symbolic, some things literal. That's what we're trying to decipher here. <clears throat> he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. See, I don't know anything about no seven thunders, you know what I'm saying? Seven thunders, they spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. So he was writing down these, these visions that we're reading about right now. Okay? Seal up what the... the he heard a voice from heaven after the, after the seven thunders spoke. He was about to write, but he heard a voice from heaven say... Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. So here, um, you know, we're assuming because he told them not to write down what the thunders were saying, they have some type of, you know, thing where to be kept secret, right? Obviously, some type of secret that if you knew what it was, you could probably decipher um, not so much the literal from the symbolic but what was going to happen um specifically that they didn't want you to know that they didn't want they don't want you to know okay then the angel and and may not may not even be that they want you to know it could be that they don't want demons to know or whatever because we're reading the bibles they, they can read the bible too you know they know the scriptures too um, that's why when that, that's why Satan told Jesus, "Hey, if you throw yourself down. Isn't it written that God will, you know, save you?" Let's see. They know they're not stupid. So let's go to verse five. The angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven, and he swore by him who lives forever and ever. Okay, that's obviously God, who created the heavens. And all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it and the sea, all that is in it and said, there will be no more delay. So you're like, no more delay for what? But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished. So like mystery of God. So something of his, something we don't know is another mystery. The, the seven, uh, the seven thunders mystery. And then this is another mystery. So this whole. These whole couple of verses here are just uh, kind of mysterious. And so we don't know or can uh, we can, uh, you know, assume, but it's it's way going to be far out there from the truth because, you know, it's that's why that's what a mystery means. It's unknown. Just as he announced to the prophets. So that's why it's it's kind of hard to interpret these surrounding scriptures. The voice that I had heard heard from the heaven spoke to me once more so this is the same voice that told him not to write down uh, what the thunders were saying go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of an angel who is standing in the sea and on the land okay so I went to the angel and asked him to give me the scroll he said to me take it and eat it it will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth will be sweet as honey. So, if you guys know what a scroll is, a scroll is like, um, you know, a piece of, uh, a lot of 
what we would call paper, but it could be made of papyrus and different things that has two wooden or metal ends that holding the paper type or papyrus or whatever together. You cannot eat that. Okay? You can't eat the, You could eat it. You can't eat that. You can't eat. It's not some type of chicken, you know, or some bread. You could just eat it. He did specify that the scroll was small. So maybe if the scroll was um, really small, that had, you know, it would have to be very small. But the the angel with the rainbow on his head is very big. So, you know, we don't know. It's a, just, it's a little scroll, though, so maybe he could eat it. Once again, this is speculation. Or, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Once again, the reason why I bring up that you a normal person can't eat it because we're trying to f decipher if he is in the dream in the vision or if he's in you know some type of physical reality so i took the scroll from the angels and ate it the angels hand ate it. it tastes sweet as honey in my mouth it turned sour in my stomach okay so let's go to the next one then i was told you must prophesy again about many things nations languages and tongues so for me from what just happened though that scroll that he ate basically was a bunch of information that he needed this is my what i'm interpreting about the scroll so what what it means that he ate the scroll was all that information that was written down in that small scroll was with him so that's how he could know these prophecies and stuff because of the information in the scroll was literally a part of him after he ate it. So I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers. Okay, 12, but exclude the outer court did not measure because given to the Gentiles they will trample on the holy city for 42 months and I'll appoint my two witnesses okay check this out this this we're going into trying to figure this one out is this literal or is it symbolic this one okay so and i pointed to my witnesses and i'll prophesy for 1260 days and it doesn't say it here but it's about three years and five months it's like three years four point something Almost three and a half years, okay? So, let's go to the next uh, verse here. They are two olive trees. So, for some reason, he's referring to them as olive trees. And two lampstands. And they stand before the Lord of the earth. So, they're on earth, okay? He's referring to them, two olive trees and two lampstands. Okay, if anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. So, in this particular verse, once again, you don't see anybody today, you know, shooting fire out of their mouths and devouring other humans with this fire. Um... But, once again, the end of the verse is quite literal. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. That's extremely literal. That's a literal thing. When, before, they're saying something that, you know, is not seen every day. Just because something is seen every day, we obviously know that God could make it happen. Or could do that. Nothing is impossible with God. But we're trying to figure out if these... Um, specific verses are literal they have the power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying so that is extremely literal Jesus could do that too you know he stopped the waters the wind they have the power to turn the waters into blood we saw that in uh, you know when they the ten plagues and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want so these guys you do not want to mess with these guys Okay, if these two prophets are literal, you do not want to mess with them. So, Revelation is based on a future point in time. 
So there is something that we're going to read right now that happened in the past, but it's not talking about the past. It's talking about kind of like a timeline that that happened, and then this this is gonna. I'll, I'll sh we'll talk. We'll show you. I'll show you right now. Okay, so they can strike the earth with plagues whenever they want. Okay, these two uh, of God's prophetic witnesses. Now, when they have finished their testimony after the three uh, and a half years, not exactly, but close, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. So, this is where I really want to talk about, too, because in the Wood Word TV video, you know, he says, that this beast is is real and in this verse that i'm reading um this is very literal verse this this along with the last uh sorry hold on. this verse along with the last verses this verse is a very literal verse even though it's saying that they have these you know you know these uh these holy powers um it's, it's still a very literal verse this is another very literal verse so the like i said the last couple verses are extremely literal okay so we'll attack them and probably and kill them this is a very literal verse so that's kind of saying that's kind of saying that the beast is real like an a literal beast their bodies, okay, of the two uh, witnesses, will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively. Now, this is extremely interesting verse. You can see why. Called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. So, why would it mention the word figuratively? Okay. First, let's go ahead and look up real quick what figuratively actually means. Okay. Used to indicate a departure from a literal use of words uh, metaphorically. So it's not literal. Okay. So what it's saying here is that the city was figuratively called Sodom and Egypt. Not literally called that. So, because it's saying that the city was called that, figuratively called that, that means the rest of the verse and the surrounding verse is literal. Because if if the city, if it wasn't just the city, it would be the whole, everything would be figuratively, a figurative matter of speech. But they only specified the city being called that as figurative, which once again implies that the surrounding verses are literal because why, why else would it say that they're figuratively called that if the whole thing wasn't figurative okay that's very interesting let's go to the next verse for three and a half days some from every people tribe language and tongue will gaze at their bodies and refuse burial. So why is that? It's because that they were pissing people off. They didn't want to. People don't want to hear what they have to say about God. Okay, and so when they the people would bother them, they would be running from them because they know they have these crazy powers. Power to you know stop the the heavens from raining. Power to ha of have fire come out. Okay, so the people were didn't want to refuse to bury them. That's a very literal verse okay okay let's read um 10 the inhabitants of the earth will gloat about them an extremely extremely literal verse okay you don't say in a figurative speech or a, a symbolic kind of way they will be celebrate and sending each other gifts like that's like saying oh i went to the kitchen and i got some um food from the fridge and i was eating for like you know 10 minutes there is no figurative or symbolism in that sentence. Neither is there, is there any in that which is right before. 
Okay, but th th this one is very literal too. It, but it's right before talk. You know, the scriptures of them having these these abilities and the beast giving the beast an extremely physical and literal body from the abyss, which came from the abyss. The beast came from the abyss. That's giving it an extreme. This is what I'm talking about. This is probably where Woodward, um, you know, is getting and saying that is is literal. And according to what we're reading right now, it is literal. But I'm showing you the exact scriptures. And, and, it, and what it's saying here is very literal. You can't get more literal than they were celebrating and giving each other gifts. You see what I'm saying? You can't get more literal than that. Because the two prophets had tormented those who lived on the earth. So they were happy and they were happy that they were gone. Let's go to 11. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God had entered them. So you, know, you guys know what the breath of God is, right? The breath of life is. And God, and, and God can bestow the same power on other humans, on, on anyone that they can have the power to bring somebody's spirit back into their body so in the beginning you know god breathed breathed okay his breath breathed into adam he became a living soul so the breath whenever god breathes it has a lot to do with uh life and spirit so uh, that's another story though i'm not going to get sidetracked on that right now but he breathed the life of, uh, uh, into them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. So they were like, what happened? They were just, they were just goners. And now they're standing on their feet, and they're alive. What is going on, man? And you see, a lot of um, things happen for a reason, because remember, they didn't want to bury them. Not saying that if they didn't, they, was, they wouldn't have came back. They would have, come, they would have came back either way. Okay, this is 12. Then they, and remember that they, they, they came back in three days. Let's go back. They came back in three and a half days. That's as long as they were uh, preaching for in years, three and a half years. And remember, Jesus came back in three days too. So numbers, numbers. Okay, so Revelation 11, 12. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went to heaven in a cloud with their enemies. Remember that the, there's another scriptures with Elijah and Elisha, and uh, Elisha had gone up in the in a cloud. Remember with the chariots of fiery horses and the chariots was on fire. Yeah, something similar to that, which was ex which was literal, which was a literal thing that happened. You say, what did it, oh this this can't be uh, symbolic. There was a cloud. And uh, they went up on a cloud. How can you go up on a cloud? Look up the scripture. Okay, let's look it up right now. Hold on. Okay, so that's going to be Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. And they were walking along and talking together. Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. So this is extremely literal they were walking they were walking this the, before this doesn't say anything about a vision before this says nothing about a dream elijah was sad that he went up and he's like my father my father he was like a father figure to him the chariots and horsemen of israel and elijah saw him no more so he took his garments and torn two. he was really mad he was really sad he got you know twice as much uh holy spirit um Okay, and that's and the, and you keep reading, and it's nothing about it. It's symbolic. It's a hundred percent literal thing that that happened. It took place in the Bible. So these two go up to heaven in a cloud. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake, and a tent to the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and survivors were terrified, giving God glory. So after that, seven thousand people were basically demolished. The second was passed. Third woe is coming. So basically, their job was done, um, and 
we can keep going, but I don't want to go any further because we talk about the beast in this scriptures being extremely literal. We talked about the cloud being extremely literal, and they were shown the people were shown that these two prophets were still alive, and then they went up to heaven. So, and then they gave God glory after seven thousand of them had been taken. Um, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, and share. Check the links in the description. Peace out. Oh, and shout out to Wood Woodward TV. You know, if I didn't see the video, I probably would not have made this video for you guys. So go and subscribe to Woodward TV. Tell them Jared333 sent you there. And have a blessed day. God be with you.